Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday morning. Today I'm actually going to be doing a little sit down chat with you because I've not actually done this type of video before and I don't know why I haven't done it. I think I just, when I started YouTube for my artwork, it was very much straight into the artwork rather than the sitting down and explaining who I am and what I am and how did I get here in the first place. It's also a nice uh, way for me to reflect on at what point I am in my artist career and where I need to step forward but also on my channel I uh, will be speaking a bit about things that are to come which are quite exciting so these sets of questions are from a group called Collective Art or Collect Art and they were sent to me because I was involved with a interview with selections of my sculpture pieces that I had to answer, I had to write them down instead of verbally talking to them but I thought the questions were so realistic and you get quite a lot out of it from my response and also when I was writing it I just thought it opened my brain up <laughs> just to make it sound more informative and I thought I've, as I was writing it I didn't realise that I haven't actually sat down and done a proper Q&A as an artist onto my channel so I know I know that my channel isn't as popular as some of the other channels but it does not mean that the quality isn't here so I'm going to sit down go through the 11 questions that they asked me and give you a verbal response I will leave a link to that actual uh, opportunity in my description box if you want to check out the artworks I submitted for it they are all my sculpture pieces if any of you have not seen them before question number one where are you from and how does that affect your work? So originally I am from the southwest of England, so around Somerset, Bristol, Bath area. A bit of a mixture of all the accents basically. And I moved up to the northwest in 2019, in November of 2019 that is. And I have found that from going somewhere where it's very urban and very quiet, and the wilderness is pretty much about two steps outside your doorstep to a place that's a bit more modernised and city-like with two steps out your doorstep and you're near, you can get a train to Liverpool or Manchester. That for me, I had this constant need to feel like and appreciate the wildness a lot more and very easily becomes part of my work because my, work, my artwork was already really organic and the composition and the contrast between man-made and natural organic forms were always intertwined because I liked to show the balance between the two but also the contrast as well because I do think they work really really well and I think that's how my indulgence well not my indulgence my what's the word my sudden move of wilderness going to much more of a not extreme modernization but there is that need of appreciation so every time i go outside now it does really affect me more at the fact that the wilderness <laughs> is a bit further away from me but i can still appreciate as much more and also when you're in a city in town doesn't mean that i don't like going to liverpool manchester it's just more of a thing that you spot especially when you go into a park in Bath in uh, Liverpool and you go oh <laughs> they have that here question number two is what is your background so I identify myself as a medium mark maker or just a mark maker I have no one set medium because the medium is chosen by the project and how I can successfully translate it from an idea into an art form for me recently it's been a lot more of the line of prints and drawings i think that's because the reflection of my space for, is reflected into my art practice not as a bad way but because i literally have about three meter wall space compared to back at my university which was three by three meters rather than just a three meter space my brain subconsciously knows that and goes you can still make a really successful artwork but you just have to downscale it the quality is still there and you may find that the time scale is a little bit shorter because I'm not being given nine months to create a finished product. I'm sometimes be giving myself three months. So 
having a shorter smaller space actually does help with being able to create something that's good quality but also is able to translate the idea between good and bad basically like um i'll give you an example recently came back from mexico and i wanted to translate it into some sort of art form i don't know where to start <laughs> and then i thought from what i learned out there about the mayan tradition and how not just chichen itza there's another place that we went because they were less popular they were much more rural and but still the history the, the story the history the history behind it was just very overwhelming and you literally felt felt like you stepped back in time because it was pretty much untouched and unpristine like Chichen Itza whereas Koba was very raw and I wanted to reflect that somehow I ended up thinking about liner prints and drawings and paintings naturally I and mean, it only was when I was on my last few days just being by the beach <laughs> Uh, just lying down, relaxing. I just finished my book and I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I just spent hours just staring out to sea and the amount of things that I saw, I saw wildlife, I saw the sea change colour, it went from blues to greens to blacks, where the, the clouds got involved. I saw some little mini uh, wind tornadoes, I think called like water spouts, that's the word, water spouts. And this change just got to me, the fact that it, everything just kept on like changing constantly nothing was ever the same every single second changed so that you couldn't physically see it and I wanted to replicate that as well that's those two separate ideas I didn't know it would actually come very well together and how I did that was through line imprinting if any of you want to see the video I will leave a link in the description box it was actually quite a recent video so you can check that out basically I did a drawing on a liner print of the sea in an abstract form and I printed it with colours and then I replicated it into a Mayan number which was number 13 because it was the most amount I could get onto a certain bit of paint. But that's just one example of how I work. I don't know if that project's quite finished yet. It might be but we'll have to see. <laughs> Question number three. Why did you choose to be an artist? Looking back now <laughs> I didn't realise that art was like a, a career I thought it was very much more of a hobby and I don't want to say I didn't take it seriously but it wasn't one of those things where I was like okay this is what I want to do until I was a very I think I was about 18 19 I was in my f first year of sixth form I took four subjects and I was just miserable I didn't like any of them apart from art which was kind of ironic because I didn't realise that I liked it because of what it was and what it stood for. I only liked it because it was like kind of a wind down and it was very mentally stimulating. But I got to do what I wanted to do rather than you get taught, you're getting taught this and this is how it goes. And now you've got to write an answer onto this question about Freud's disillusion with children or something like that. It was just a very free subject that I loved. But I think what really clicked for me is when I went to the Tate in London. There is a room like that room that I like to call the Rothko room, which is basically several paintings in a light controlled space that has this weird aura about it. And I just remember sitting in there and just looking at these paintings and just being overwhelmed to the thought that something a physical pigment that has been applied by a brush by someone has created these marks to make me feel like this and I thought why why can't I do that you know like if a guy back in the 60s could do that then why can't I maybe I can create that sort of artwork and from that point on I began to click that the fact that people generally could make a living out of this not just a living just it's not always about money but as an artist you need to have money to survive to be able to pay the bills I would quite happily sacrifice all my leisures if I just got paid enough to cover my bills and to be able to do this for the rest of my life I still regularly go back to that room when I get a chance to go to London I actually haven't been to London for about three years 
and that needs to change i think i'm planning to go in january so i'm going to visit a lot of art galleries whilst i'm there question number four what inspires you <laughs> quite a short question this one everything <laughs> so i take any experience um any solution anything to do with my daily life into my artwork it could be a visit it could be ex like i said experience it could be anything nothing no one thing will truly inspire me into an artwork or project because one thing is not enough back when i did some printmaking in my gap year after university i was highly influenced by the forestry after moving back from university and it just it was overwhelming but very comforting to be able to step out my door and be in a forest <laughs> it was that great but then part of me was just like yeah but there's so much color there's so much vibrancy but i didn't want to use the usual greens and yellows and reds that you see naturally throughout that period this is when the art research came into play because this is when i found out that actually looking back at all the artworks that i that clicked with me to to do with this project were very monotoned so naturally i went towards the monotone spectrum which is completely fine because you can always add color later on <laughs> but whilst i was there i got a chance to go to iceland and suddenly i found myself absorbing all these beautiful neutral tones of greys of the grayscale because even though it was just one color you could still make this atmosphere of depth and environment and this tremendous landscape just by using text different textures different types of the same color and i just really wanted to rectify that within my artwork Yes, the experience of Iceland had like several other projects afterwards, but it was a finishing point of that project, but also a starting point for another one. And I quite like that, how it just completely turns into something new. Question five, what does your work aim to say? <laughs> well, I'm hoping that it is a bit like, come over here, <laughs> because I quite like that engagement of, an artwork that just suddenly like grabs your attention not in the way of like screaming and shouting but your it's much more curiosity that grabs your attention rather than it being because it's a bright color because it's a large scale because it's a shark in a fish tank you know it's just one of those ones that grabs your attention for the right thing because you want to learn more about it because you're constantly questioning it and i like the idea of being constantly questioning a piece of artwork especially my own there are some artworks that i have no idea why i like them but it's i could probably write a dissertation of why and what <laughs> still keeps me interested in this artwork that natural loss of curiosity has been something that i have noticed within society and i think that's why i quite like it because it brings back this conversation of why is that there you know a lot of things he says we got told this is why what and how whereas my types of artwork when i get them to that point where they go what are you why are you here and why do you function like that and the fact that the artwork can't really speak back it's very much your own opinion and reflection of it is why it creates this curiosity about it and i really love that idea that people are still going away thinking about it I'm hoping that's what my artwork does anyway. It's completely different for what you, what some people grab from it, but that's my general aim for my artwork to be a bit more curious and to bring viewers in to be able to discover what can make their brain click and that realization of, oh, it might be this, mm, maybe not. And then that discussion that you can have with your peers about it, it's just much more exciting than going, oh, it's a, shark in a tank just a little quick tea break not sponsored by sports direct by the way i have twining's hearty tea if anyone wants to know she smells a little bit because she's a little bit overweight <laughs> question number six what is your biggest challenge in being an artist and how do you address it time 
to be able to sit down and actually do it. <laughs> because I don't live with my parents, I live with my boyfriend. We both have full-time jobs and his is nine to five, Monday to Friday, whereas mine is in retail. So I get one day off a week and I get every other weekend off, which is lovely for retail, but it's not consistent, which means, well, it basically means that when I do get time to myself and it's not with my other half, I do tend to stick artwork into it, but you've also got all the house chores and then you've also got to make sure you pay the bills and do all those lovely admin bits that you have to do as an adult. Um, tidy your house, do the washing, wash your clothes, vacuum the rug again, because someone's left loads of hairs on it. <laughs> and then there's other times when I am off and we're both off and we want to spend some time together because when we are together, we've either got to do something together that's not really fun or we're both skint, we're both tired. So it's that balance of trying to be able to see each other, but also allow my art practice to thrive. The social side of it, I, like I won't spend hundreds of my time with my other half. I do go and see my parents down in Somerset, which is about four hours on the train, which is fabulous. <laughs> And then I've also got some other friends and family that want to spend time with me as well as my other career and my other hobbies that take a bit of time because sometimes it's nice to just have a bit of me time but to be able to try and fit it all around it, it can be such a headache but the best thing I've found that has worked personally for me and I don't know if it will work for anyone else is that I will set aside 10 minutes each day to do something art related so then your brain is still clicking away, even if it's just for 10 minutes, because very often you think, oh, I haven't got time for this, but I'll make 10 minutes for my time. And then before you know it, like, I think it was last Thursday, I was like, I've got, I've got 10 minutes. I'm just going to sit down and do a bit of painting. And before I knew it, I had an hour and a half. I went, I pretty much just dissolved. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I've still got two things to do, but I can actually do them after this. And it's kind of that realisation and changing your mind and the concept of the fact that do you not have time or do you just don't want to make time for it? And sometimes, yeah, I only have 10 minutes and it's absolutely fine. I have committed to that goal of just doing 10 minutes. Some people may be lucky and maybe be able to do 20 minutes to an hour. That is fantastic. But even if it is just 10 minutes, you're still thinking about art no matter what. And when it does happen that you can spend hours on it from a 10 minute period and realise oh wait those things that I need to do they can wait this is more important and then you realise the fact that you've put yourself first mentally and physically that makes you feel so much better and for someone who does struggle with being able to get all my hobbies into my life I have found that as the best way of doing it and being able to be to get that work-life balance which we all kind of crave and need. Number seven, what do you like and dislike about the art world? A bit controversial this, I remember writing about it and I went oh my god I'll just write about it and then if I hate it it's fine but I feel like if you haven't gone to a London university with fine art you're not taken seriously enough because you haven't got that name, that brand staples to your artwork. Like I remember being in college and one of the pupils in my class went to interview at the University of Chelsea for fine art and apparently her interview was awful. Like they just tore her artwork completely up. Like not physically, but like when, why did you do this? This is this isn't great. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? I don't like this. I don't like that. And she had to physically battle her way through it. And she said at the very end, she was literally in tears because that was how they perceived and interviewed their students. Like I understand it's to survive the art world and the heart critics, but she was a student. You shouldn't be looking for that hardship because then you only come out with one kind of artist 
and that for me makes me very very angry the fact that you have to tick those boxes to be able to get into that realm of people that in my instincts are a bit snobby because <laughs> if you don't fit into their kind of box then you're not really worth it you're not valid for it very disheartening because you can work your socks off really enjoy the project really enjoy making art but not be taken seriously just because of where you graduated or where you studied or the fact that you didn't graduate or you didn't study at fine art that's also another critic of mine saying that what i do like about the art world is that if you do get the chance to break into the art industry the bit before of where you're just yourself your artworks before they get popular are literally the purest form of the art world and there are some people out there that do really appreciate your artwork and because you actually physically get to talk to them because you're not famous you're not worldwide you're not posted on every single book or made into some form of contemporary artwork you do get that down-to-earth critique which I think a lot of us are missing. It's a bit like when music, mus if I can speak, it's a bit like when mus musicians, musicians, I'm trying to speak, it's not working, <laughs> become from going into a room with like five or six people and they pre uh, they physically appreciate that artwork. They, they physically appreciate the music for what it is because they physically came. They're not coming for the name, they're coming to enjoy the music. And then as the stadiums get bigger and bigger and bigger, some people just go for the hell of it. And then you get that weird section in the back where people who have a share in the stadium or are known by the artist or link unnecessary links towards that artist or that stadium, they're just there for the sake of it. They're not actually there to appreciate it. They're just there for the name and what they've become rather than the actual art form itself. I think that's the easiest way for me to describe it. Cool. <laughs> Number eight, name the artist or artists you'd like to compare to and why. I think, let me just have a quick drink first. <laughs> the first couple of artists that do come to mind about who I want to be compared to is, for one, is definitely Rachel Whiteread. I'm hoping I'm saying her second name right <laughs> i have a bit of a list if anyone any of you have haven't noticed already um especially towards my sculpture pieces because it's the negative space that she notices is what is important because we won't ever see that unless she pointed it out to us there's also the book i think the book shelves one was quite unique it was the space in between that really got me and I remember seeing her artwork and I'm going oh my god that's literally what I'm trying to explain that it's like when someone writes a song and it describes you personally on how that situation is and you just go oh my god that's it she's definitely one there is also a couple of other painters um there's Frank Elbach that I like to include not as a painting style but as a more of a print making inspiration because of all the textures and tones and that weird delusion of is this all one layer or is it multiple because when he went wrong with some of his paintings he used to stick a bit of paper on top and just carry on painting on top of it there's also a bit of Jackson Pollock floating around in there <laughs> I don't know why but I think he just always kind of stick in my artworks there's quite a lot of few there's like a few artists that tend to stick into my art pieces where there's just one painting or one artwork that speaks to me more, like Marshall Duchamp's Duchamp. I, I, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering all these names. <laughs> the moving figure is one of my favourites. You can't go without saying Picasso, but I think his most popular one for me is the Guernica because of what it says. The scale is used just perfectly you see the artwork before you see oh it's really big and I prefer that I feel like some people use the scale to make the artwork the artwork rather than he's used the scale because it's needed rather than he's used the scale 
because of to make the bar work better basically i normally don't like to be compared by to other art artists because yes they have influenced me but it's not just all about them you just kind of look around of how you and how other artists translate their idea from a to b but it doesn't mean that i want to be compared to them yeah you can say oh it's similar but don't compare me to one artist to another because of xyz because it makes me feel like you're thinking about them their work and themselves rather than actually taking in of what the artwork is saying and that's when i find it becomes more of a distraction and you haven't got the point of the artwork number nine what is the hardest part of creating for you again i've i've mentioned this already about trying to get time aside to be able to create the artwork but at the moment <laughs> it's the space uh, unlike a lot of people i don't have an art studio because i can't afford one i'm not at that financial stability to be able to warrant hiring out an art space or even building one i would love to be able to build one <laughs> i would love to be able to find one of those old buildings there's one really old building in liverpool that is just really run down and not used and it's just a waste of space i would love to be able to purchase it and just renovate the whole thing bring it back to the natural state that it should be and to be able to be appreciated because it's a i think it's an old victorian um building that has these really long high walls and ceilings that would be perfect for demonstrating artwork and creating artwork in maybe if i won a lottery that's one of the things i would love to do but yeah an art studio that isn't going to influence my artwork i like to be here there and everywhere i actually don't like to sit down while making well whilst making artwork but i have no choice at the moment so that's why i find that the artwork becomes very much smaller because you're you're sitting down i do try to stand up when i can but again it's one of the things i can't control and having a bigger art space would help me and plus it won't mean i won't get art on the bits of pieces that i don't want to get art on <laughs> because it's not literally sat next to each other <laughs> number 10 what is the role of an artist in society so i mentioned this piece of artwork because i thought it demonstrated what artists do for society when they do it properly so i think most of you know an artist called banksy he's from the southwest no i do not know him <laughs> unfortunately but he did a painting of parliament it is called devolved parliament i highly suggest that you look it up on youtube or on google it was on display in bristol um at the art gallery and museum in the bristol city center a few years ago so i don't know if it's still there or not but it basically demonstrates what artists can see within society it's funny because people think that well my perception of what i think people might see from other artists is that a flower is just a flower you can only kind of draw it in one way but an artist can see a flower so so differently compared to several other people including artists no one reflection is the same and i feel like that is such a ideal artwork to explain why artists are critical in society because they literally show you what is already in front of you but either make it humorous either be able to describe it in a way that you feel rather than what is in front of you because we all know that parliament is just filled with monkeys <laughs> and they bicker and monkeys i think are actually as intelligent as a four-year-old i think i've heard that somewhere which i thought was perfect when i saw it i just completely laughed so much about <laughs> when i saw it actually with my own two eyes but i think it's just that role of an artist in society be able to demonstrate how a certain event can be transformed into a piece of artwork either from emotional state experience state or as a subconscious state i hope that makes sense <laughs> another tea break i forgot how much talking drives your throat out <laughs> number 11 who are your biggest artist influences so 
I have already mentioned some artists that I like to be compared to, well compared to, but there are artists out there that are not fine art artists. Like recently I have been loving Halsey's new album. It's called If I Can't Have Love I Want Power. It literally describes my life. Like every time I've got it on vinyl and when I put it on, every single song just rings it it just takes me into this world where I can just be myself and just transpire through what I feel into music and words because I can translate it into pictures but I can't translate it into words because that's not who I am whereas Halsey has translated it into words, music, dance, all the above and I find that truly inspiring because she, she actually is also an artist which is mind-blowing and she's actually only a couple of years older than me from what she's achieved already from the art industry the musical art industry that is is just beyond beyond beyondness <laughs> it's just beyond whatever she probably imagined and what society could have probably given her it's also an honorable mention one of my favorite bands called Palmer have just released a new song but also the lead singer of Paramore called Hayley Williams she did a solo album which is an, again another masterpiece because it was so good it like every single song resonated with me and it's just one of the, I find it very hard to sit down and listen to an artist's whole album because I can find some of their songs just a bit crap a bit rubbish and not like I lose the connection with them, like they'll have three of the good songs which they've released but the rest of them aren't really great. Whereas Halsey and Hayley Williams and Paramore, and Paramore, I can listen to all their songs, I know all the lyrics to all their songs and it's just, it, it's just me, I feel more me that I now that I've discovered them. And I think that's the best way to describe it. If you haven't listened to their music, please, please go check it out because it's just one of those things you need to look at and listen and just appreciate. <laughs> Number 12. How do you know when a work is finished? So generally, it's when I sit down and I look at it and I physically can't do anything more, as in I'm not straight going in. If I'm literally there thinking, going, okay, what is wrong with this? Then it's finished. You could argue that this isn't a great way to work because sometimes you do need a bit of time to go back to it and that's why if I'm not straight up going towards it then I go okay that's finished I'll put it to one side I'll wait I'll wait a day a couple of weeks if it hasn't clicked in my head that I've put it there and I kind of go oh I forgot about this then it's not finished because every single piece of artwork that has been finished for me when I look at it, I, go, I can remember when I've done it, what's caused me to do that artwork and I get a flashback to how, what and where I felt in that moment of when I created that artwork. You can also, the amount of time you've put on it as well is a good indicator of whether or not it's finished. Question 13, which is the last question because this video is already 40 minutes long. <laughs> do you have any exhibitions coming up? Currently I do not but I am applying for some because it takes a lot of time to apply for exhibitions and also getting ready for them as well. It is a very very busy period for me because currently the day that I'm filming is the 22nd of October and between now and December I'm posting a lot of videos because I'm actually doing vlogmas this year. Not just art related but also kind of a personal life for me because it is I like you guys to see what kind of influences me and what I actually do on my days off because it's not always about art <laughs> even though I want to be a fully functioning artist with my own studio and lots of exhibitions and all those lovely little bits of being appreciated in interviewed etc etc it doesn't mean that I don't know how to settle down so I'd like to bring you along with me on those days to be able to show you what I'm getting up to just generally getting the Christmas spirit as well <laughs> If you have made it to the end, congratulations, <laughs> you've put up with me. I really hope those questions have helped you understand 
myself a bit more and if you do have any other further questions please leave in the comment section below if i get enough questions i will very very gladly do another sit down and q a for my channel because i actually thoroughly enjoyed this it's very quite comforting to be able to sit down and talk for a long period of time i don't know how i'm going to edit this because it's so long <laughs> i do also hope that you got something out of this whether it be information or advice or tips on how to keep your artist practice going or any other artists that you have not necessarily seen or any artworks that you haven't seen because when you do tend to be an artist or work within a creative industry to be able to continuously work on your practice is very very important and that's why I feel like the 10 minute rule for anyone would work extremely well for any situation and case. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Like I said, I will leave a couple of links down in the description box below for anything that I've mentioned that I would like you to guys to check out and to check out, <laughs> like you guys to go and check out because it's quite useful and, and informative. Is that the right word? But yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if I have if you have not already, and don't forget to share this video with anyone who would like to see anything like this as well. If there's anything that I've mentioned about my artworks that you would like to know more information about, there is a link in my description box which has all my artworks that I have available to sell and to buy as well as well as a couple of extras that I feature on my channel as well as a couple of other ones that I don't. But yeah, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!